Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining for the very first episode of New Wave Podcast, a new show coming from New Cruise Films, where we talk to and promote student filmmakers. And here today, I have my co-host, uh, Veronica Tulo, and our guest, Elizer Hernandez. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You went ahead and you made a short film called Relentless, and you actually won your first award. So congratulations. Nice. Great start. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. What is the film about? Well, Relentless is essentially a, a, <clears throat> a five finish short film done by a group of incredibly talent, talented students. Um, it was a learning lesson. Everybody did a great job. It, it ultimately looked better than my initial vision, ultimately. So two weeks of pre-production, three days of filming, two weeks of post-production. Oh, yeah. It's so funny. Whenever I, I talk to people and I tell them that I do film, they're always like, oh, that must be so fun, just hopping on set and with your <laughs> camera. And I'm like, no. 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 And, and I tell them, I'm like, you have pre-production, you have storyboarding and shot lists and acting. And, blah, blah, blah. and they're like, I didn't know it was that much work. Yeah. It's so much work. Man. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so funny. Like people's reactions when you tell them exactly what you have to do for like a five minute short. It's like I haven't <laughs> I haven't slept in weeks for this five minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Man, I I was editing until like six forty five AM for like five days straight. It's oh. it's crazy. Yeah. But it's so fun. The <laughs> skip meals, the skip lunch, breakfast and dinners yep. just so we can do the editing. It's for at 5 a.m. for me <laughs> <laughs> to keep you up. Because, <laughs> like, this one half second cut doesn't work, and you have to, yep. like, do it all over again. In your case, it's at least as cookies. That's protein and calories. In my case, it's mostly just coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eli, so give us a little bit of history about who you are, where you came from. I'm Cuban. I was born and raised in Cuba. The one thing that makes me want to be a filmmaker, the one thing that I that makes me want to get into Hollywood is because I hate Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I mean it in the 100%. most, just the simplicity, the cookie cutter stuff, the, all the, it's, it's all been done and it's all been repeated and I've seen it over and over and over. My reason for being a creative person is I want to get into Hollywood because I want to destroy it and change it for the best. As you being a filmmaker, Veronica, as well, um, and also a student filmmaker like Eli, um, your thoughts. I want to hear what you, your reaction off of what he's saying and, and how you feel about that, too. I think when it comes to people who are making the movies, they're so focused on basing what they're making off of pre-established, you know, fan bases and ideas and stories if they just want like more and more sequels and like remakes and and like based on books but they're not really focusing on like originals which is what i think at least personally they need to be focusing on they need to be working on new content giving people like new ideas new stories and i think that's where the next generation comes in because we grew up watching all these sequels and all these remakes and all these based on books and we just want something new and something fresh and something exciting so that's not like what we've seen a hundred times before. And I think the idea of kind of like the next generation coming in and just taking everything over and recreating what Hollywood means is something that I'm very much looking forward to being a part of. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you can agree with me, Eli, when like when I say that uh, us as the next generation of filmmakers are so ready to just break down what Hollywood means to people and rebuild it from the ground up. So you are a student filmmaker, you're an indie filmmaker. <laughs> what would you say is the hardest part of being, or like the most challenging part of being a student filmmaker and indie filmmaker? Learning to know when like you're wrong or learning to admit where your weakness or just admitting, admitting your faults, admitting your faults because things are gonna go wrong and you can't control it. And you have to like rely on your team to to make sure everything works out and and ultimately like learn to keep your cool and and I think doing all that will help you keep your cool. I don't know if I can speak for 
all, all directors, but most, if not a lot, have some sort of power complex <laughs> when it comes to being a director. Because you always want to have like your hands in every single part of the film, and you always want to be like doing something and like telling people what to do. Mm-hmm. But film is such a collaborative effort that like it's so hard to just like step back and trust people. And that's, yeah, I think that's that definitely comes with like experience and then just surrounding yourself with people that you can trust. Veronica, for you, what have so far with all the projects that you've worked on, uh, and especially recently, what do you find this most challenging part? For me, especially when it comes to COVID, is just I don't have a lot of resources when it comes to crew. So the past four films that I made have just been me. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of pressure and a lot of stress, especially when you're shooting, like when you're actually on shooting day, you can only focus on so many things at once. <laughs> so if you're shooting it and you're focusing on the cinematography and the composition and everything, you can't really put as much effort into the actors as you want to or in the lighting or in everything. So it's very overwhelming. <laughs> so for the, for the last film that I shot that's going to be released sometime in early February, we were originally supposed to shoot it two and a half, three days, but because I was so overwhelmed with everything and it was one of the biggest projects I ever worked on and I was doing it entirely alone, literally everything that could go wrong went wrong and oh, we ended up having to shoot for five days. Oh, we were supposed wow. to do two and a half, we had to shoot for five days. Oh, oh, it was rough, man. But I learned so much from it. What, what was the thing that you've learned as a director compared to when you first started going to class and wanting to be a filmmaker and i've just taken maybe like one two classes on filmmaking so far i have learned so much about really that directing isn't just about you know with the actors it's it's there's so much you can do with directing you can you can tell so many stories subconsciously with the the visual storytelling you know working on the composition working with all the different uh you know Heads of every like little department with the with the director of photography with the just, ah, it's just it's so interesting like how much you can do and really how much I kind of power you have over the film but over like the artistic vision. Directing is a, a is a beautiful and um, dangerous <laughs> position to be in mm-hmm. by, all, by all means all means. Mm-hmm. So so for those of you who are listening and watching. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Collaboration. Yeah, right. Collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, understand that as a director, you have to like learn to earn your respect, and uh, everybody else needs to learn to respect. And Veronica, though, you've been filming by yourself, so you're probably having wars with yourself. And I can only yes. imagine. Yes. She's like, Literally. Oh, no. yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My actors know. I talk to myself a lot on set. Well, I'll be like moving a light. I'll be like, mm, is that good? No. Oh, maybe I should put it over here. Like, ah, oh, that looks awful. What am I doing? It's like, oh my gosh. I talk to myself all the time on set. These poor Dude, actors we, think I'm insane. We need behind the scenes footage of that. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so funny. I'll make a great comedy sketch. It's like a, a director with like multiple personalities. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, so before you go today, I'm going to have you and Veronica go head-to-head on some movie trivia. Oh, boy. (laughs) Let's see. You're on, man. (laughs) (laughs) We're we're going to go. I'm very competitive. (laughs) I might lose. (laughs) I'm going to first start off with the warm-up question, and this is going to be a lightning round question. So the first person who can uh, name this name a movie uh, mm. will get the point for this first lightning round. All right, you guys ready? All right, I'm preparing myself mentally. <laughs> all right, all right, Veronica, you ready? Mm. All good. Okay, mm. here we go. What movie has featured someone being eaten by a shark? Jaws. Ooh, there we go. We got one. Uh, <laughs> that was Sharknado. Easy. Oh yeah, Sharknado. Literally any of them, all of them. Yeah. What are they? Like twelve? I don't even know. Oh my god. I stop watching after three. 
All right. So here's another lightning round one. What movie has someone being stabbed in the shot in the shower? Psycho. Ooh, there we go. Now it's Ooh. tied up. What film uh, has someone being killed by forcing them to eat too much? So the person was killed by eating too much. Human centipede. No, but that's a nice guess, Veronica. Mm. Mm. All I can think of is that was it. Would you rather? Oh, that... would you? No, would you rather? I did see that one too. Yeah, no, that's not the correct answer. Mm. The a- answer is actually one of my favorite films, uh, Seven by David Fincher. Oh, right. Oh, seen it? I think both of you have seen it, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I haven't seen it. Haven't seen it. <laughs> oh, Veronica, now you need to watch that. This will test your horror film movie knowledge. Okay, Veronica, you're up first. What horror film has a character smashing their dirt bike into an artificial wall? Ooh, I have no idea. No. All right. Time's up, so I'll pass it off to you, Eli. This one, this one's tough. You have to like a motorbike to an artificial. Uh, mm. It's not a horror movie, but I'm, I've, I got nothing, so I might say Tron. Tron? No, no, no. It's actually. What was that? Happened in the woods. Yes, you're. That's it. Yeah, that's a good movie. <laughs> so right now it's still tied one-one because unfortunately, Veronica, you don't get the cabin in the woods one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So how many years did it take to get the movie Aliens made, Eli? This is the sequel to the original uh, Ridley Scott Alien. We're talking the James Cameron one. Oh. I saw it fairly recently. Oh boy! Gotta throw out a number. I'm gonna say eight years is the eight years eight. Oh no, nope, it is not. Veronica, you have a guess. I'm gonna say six. Oh, both of you are like on the other side of the spectrum. It's actually seven years. Oh. Ah, come on. <laughs> Which horror film was the first ever to be nominated for a Best Picture Oscar? Psycho? Oh, good guess, but no, that is incorrect. How about you, Eli? I'm going to say Nosferatu. Oh, that's another good guess, but no, it's actually The Exorcist. Ooh, yeah, okay. How long did it actually take him to film The Blair Witch Project? I mean, I didn't really like that movie that much, so I'm going to say, like, (laughs) I'm going to say a month. Okay, that's a good guess, Uh, but you're incorrect. (laughs) Veronica, you you go. I'm going to say two years. Ooh, two years. All right, the actual answer is eight days. Oh, okay. That's not too bad. Eight days for them to make. All right, I'm just going to test out your knowledge here with the classic. Which horror movie features a serial killer wearing a William Shatner mask? I don't know who William Shatner is. Yeah. Oh. oh, no! <laughs> That's a oh. Oh. All right, we'll give, you, we'll give you a hint. He's the original captain of the classic Star Trek films and TV oh, show. Wait, that's the Michael Myers one. Um, Halloween. Didn't yeah, they like spray paint a Captain Kirk mask? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. That, oh, that was my yes, guess. Yes, you are correct. Hey. <laughs> she has now taken the big lead to get <laughs> two to one. <laughs> and I swear to that in. William <laughs> Shatner. <laughs> there you, that is probably the most important thing you learned right now. Yes. Eli, I'm going to give you an easy toss-up one and see if you test out your classic uh, horror films here, too. Okay, what color is Freddy Krueger's sweater? Freddy Krueger. Don't ask me what movie that's from. (laughs) Red? There's two colors. Oh, yeah, it's... it's... It's it's a checkered shirt. It's a plaid shirt. It's like so. It's black and red. 
Oh, no, red, it's, red is one of them. Veronica, can you steal that one from them? Yeah, it's red. Is it red and green? Yes, it is red and green. Right. Red and green, yep. Yeah, red and green sweater. <laughs> it just blew your mind, Eli. You just see it oh. in your face. <laughs> I may be colorblind or something because I don't, <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, boy, I have to. <laughs> That movie's mostly in the dark and at night time. Right, and, right, and then, that's and right. Also, and I believe it's charred most of it too. So. Right, right. That's why. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's so fair. You can't, Good can't game. Go wrong on that one, you know. Thing all or nothing here because this one's a hard one. Okay. How many people involved in making The Exorcist died during production? Do you wanna? Do you wanna give your guess first, Eli? I'm going to say three. That's a right. reasonable number. Right. How about you, I Veronica? Four. Ooh, you guys are like close and close. To <laughs> but the mm -hmm. actual answer is nine. Nine? Jesus. People Jesus. in the production. Whoa, nine? Like, yeah. like, nine like, deaths. Dead. Like dead, dead. Yep. <laughs> yeah, dead, dead, dead. Yep. Was it yep. mostly accidents or spooky stuff going on? That's... Uh, that we have to go ahead and check out and find out and see. Because I Ooh. know there were stories of like some weird spooky things going on during the filming of that movie. But I don't know how much of the deaths are aligned to that, you know. Ugh. Was this a poltergeist also supposedly like a yes. haunted one? Yep. Yeah. That was another messed That's up one. Crazy. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, uh, these films are getting too real. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, Death the on screen is cool, but as soon as like... Crew yeah. starts dying. You gotta like check yourself a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like maybe we're doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe the story should not be told. Let's let's step back a second here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, that's an awesome job, guys. Veronica, right now you are our show reigning champion until our next episode. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have to take this crown by force. Oh, 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 here we go. Here we go. So we got three to one, Eli. Good game, man. Good, good, good attempt. Game. Good, good <laughs> attempt, both of you. All right. So other than that, Eli, thank you so much for joining with us. It's been a pleasure having you uh, with us for our first episode. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm um, I'm glad to do this again if you ever need it. And Veronica, any last words for you, from you? Yes, I do have some last words. Some advice for everyone. You are only an aspiring filmmaker until you've made a film, and then you're a filmmaker. You gotta go out and make it. So until then, guys, everyone, happy filmmaking. Be safe out there. And if you like what you watch and like what you heard, please uh, click the subscribe button. We'll be releasing an episode every month uh, for this coming year, and hopefully reach out to season two for 2022.